To quote this one person from Westchester, it is ridiculous that Janet Jackson was forced to issue an apology. CBS was fined over the accidental exposure of her nipple at the 2004 halftime show, but Adam Levine took his shirt off for part of his performance at the 2019 halftime show. CBS should be fined, otherwise it is a complete double standard. The Federal Communication Commission is responding here to a Freedom of Information Act request received and assigned to the Consumer and Governmental Affairs and Enforcement Bureau. Your request seeks complaints received by the FCC concerning Super Bowl L-I-I-I. I forget what the L is in, in Roman. That's 53. L is 50. 53. L is 50. Okay. This is how little yes. I know about sport ball. Sorry. Your request has been assigned a number, etc. We identified approximately 95 documents responsive to your request. Uh, they, in, they did not identify any additional responsive records. Exemption 6 protects files containing personally identifiable information. Balancing the public's right to disclose against an individual's right to privacy, we determined that releases information would constitute an unwarranted invasion of privacy. Uh, therefore, all FCC employees' names, complainants' names, addresses, and phone numbers have been redacted. That's fine. Um, let's see. And there's, th th this is the due process part about if, we, if you don't like our response, you have the right to appeal and all that. Let's see what they responded with. So this is the Freedom of Information Act response. I believe the request was for all complaints received concerning Super Bowl... 53 and I think there was some more specificity to it than that but it was specifically I think limited to the halftime show and you can see it starts here at 6 50 p.m. so the halftime show hasn't hasn't started yet this is uh, actually pre pre-game I believe uh, the commercial for scary stories was wholly inappropriate this continues for some time people did not like that there was a horror movie uh, commercial during the pre-game Super Bowl show. And then I think somewhere down here, we'll just skip ahead by typing the word nipples at about 9.45 p.m., which is, I guess, around the time of the halftime show or just after it starts. Where is the decency? Are nipples all over my television screen okay now? I remember when it was an issue during another Super Bowl event. I was appalled by CBS allowing the airing of nipples during its TV broadcast. Why must America be subjected to the disgusting display of nipples exhibited during the Super Bowl? It was disgusting and offensive to see nipples flaunted so brazenly. I, Dot, am very offended. I just watched the halftime show and ice on nipples on TV. I'm appalled to see naked nipples during the halftime show. I thought we got the message across with Miss Jackson that this level of indecency would not be tolerated. Poor taste sends the wrong message to young children. Adam Levine showed both his nipples by taking his shirt completely off. There are actually um, a number of more of these. Let's see. Adam Levine's nipples. Uh, they're just citing the law here, B6. Um, $550,000 fine, Ms. Jackson, for the nipple slip in 2004. So... There are a lot of complaints here. I don't know how many of these are genuine complaints and how many are more so talking about the hypocrisy of the thing. Because it is. This is kind of a double standard, right? If Janet Jackson gets fined $550,000 for showing a nipple on TV, why wouldn't Adam Levine be fined for showing his nipples on TV? Unless you're going to start arguing that nipples are sexual only on women and I don't necessarily agree with that nor does I believe the federal law which is weird because if the FCC is enforcing obscenity law saying that nipples are not allowed to be shown on on the air TV uh, there is actually a federal standard for decency or not not for decency but for um, for for whether the the chest is sexualized automatically or not and I if I Kurt I don't know if you can chime in on this but I believe the standard is that uh, it's not you you are not for you, you you are there is no law under the federal set of US codified laws and common law that says that the female nipple is sexual automatically uh, and otherwise can't be displayed in public you're outside my knowledge based on this one. I don't know. So I know there's a few 
a few states, a few cities. I believe Pennsylvania is one of the states that does not restrict the showing of the female nipple. New York City. New York City is one of them. I think San Francisco. In my area, so in Ontario, I think they determined that if guys can go topless, women have to, women are allowed to go topless um, or else it's discrimination. Yeah, I would, uh, I would think that, uh, yes. So in 2017, numerous online articles reported that due to a recent court filing, it was now legal for women to bear their breasts in public anywhere in the US. The articles appeared to be less popular. So this is mostly false. There was a court case that granted an injunction against such a law because it discriminated against women. This does not legalize it for the 50 states or whatever, but the law would have to be written in such a way that somehow didn't discriminate against women. So basically, either nobody can go topless or everybody can go topless is how I read that. Well, discrimination against sex is usually intermediate scrutiny, not strict scrutiny. So you can make a plausible argument on a much lesser standard. Um, so I do know I th- that. I think in terms of, of being out in public, um, this also relates to breastfeeding because although yes. um, women in, in my area at least, um, aren't super casual about going around without a top on in the summer, um, that when it, you know, you might expose your breast when you are breastfeeding in public. And so that you don't, in my mind, you don't want that to be an indecent act. You don't want to get on the sex offender registry because you were breastfeeding in public. Like that yeah. doesn't sound right. No, that's not. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a little ridiculous when there are nip examples where women will go topless and wear pasties of male nipples, and therefore it's not indecent. And that's, yeah, that's a very thing. clever way. Well, it gets way. a little ridiculous at that point. That is a very clever way. Yeah. Because yeah, cause if, so what is it that's sexual? Is it the breast exactly. that's sexual? Is it only big breasts that are sexual? Is it only breasts that are sexual to you? Is it only subjectively sexual breasts? I, you know, and if it's subjectively you know, sexual breasts, then Adam you. Levine's breasts are definitely up there for me. Uh, whew, sheesh, I need to take off my hat. Um, <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some popcorn going on here in a little bit. No, um, it's a, it's a very interesting situation to me because from my trying to be unbiased perspective, I don't personally see a big deal with nipples. I, I don't like. <sighs> I, I don't feel like I'm in a strip club. I don't feel like I'm I'm being prurient or sexually entertained when I see a woman with their top off otherwise doing normal things. Yeah, when I was 19 years old, I went to a topless restaurant. I thought that was cool. That's not what I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about like, if a woman wants to sun herself. Taking shirt off. I'm sorry. I know males taking their shirt off was, was, was illegal, frowned upon early 20th century. And men, mm-hmm. men actually had to fight for the right to take their tops off because of the sexualized nature of it. Early 20th century, so. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we just have to have a slow societal shift to agreeing that that topless people aren't necessarily acting in a in a offensive or lewd way, which is a weird thing to me anyway, like lewdness laws and all that. I mean, do you agree that walking around with no pants or underwear on is... is... Is, um, is inherently sexual and shouldn't be allowed. I I I believe that I so I, I I'm on board with laws that limit people from exposing their primary genitalia to the public. I feel like part of that is also just a hygiene issue, though. Like I don't want to go on the bus where someone has oh yeah sat bare yeah. ass on those seats. Th- that being yeah, so said, that, I'm not particularly fan of going on the issue. bus if they were not wearing a shirt either. I don't want their hot sweat on the seat either. So yeah, it looks like federal law is not necessarily clear on legalizing the liberation of both genders' nipples or all genders' no. nipples. But the laws preventing the exposure of someone's top would be illegal if they are not written in a gender... Uh, an ungender biased. I don't want to say gender neutral. I want to say a non-gender biased way. So it has to. You, basically, I don't think you can write a law that says only women are not allowed to expose their tops, or only women's breasts are sexual. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a subjective thing, honestly. I, I, I pre I'm pretty sure that I know lots of my guy friends who absolutely love uh, female breasts. Um, they think they're the best thing in the world. It's a subjective thing, like everybody's gonna have a different thing. So you can't say that because some people find breasts sexual that that means that all women should be restricted. I, I personally disagree with that. that or that else we would of... never be able to show like feet in public. Yeah, there are lots of people who find feet sexual, and I also, I'm not condemning those people or criticizing those people. It just doesn't, like, that doesn't do it for me. I look at feet and go, like, ew. Um, and suddenly we've gone full on burqa. Great. Yeah, so then well, let's just okay. cover up everybody, right? No, yeah, well, just, we just have to agree. We just have to agree that if you're turned on by someone's breasts in public, that you're not going to pull it out and start. It, it's not hyperbole because there's a lot of parts in the world where they do this specifically because of this reason. It is hyperbole so. for the United States of America. Well, yeah, and, and there are parts of the world where people do that stuff and they don't see the problem as being with the people who are doing the bad things. They see the problem as with the people who expose themselves uh, you know, they're, they're, they're basically non-sexual parts in public. Um, I'm just talking about any attitudes that blame... So in, in this case, we're talking about women's breasts. So any attitude that blames the woman for the man's reaction or s someone else's reaction, th that, that is just something I, I don't agree with. I believe it is the person who is having the reaction. It is their, it is their responsibility to control themselves. And this is just a fun. It seems to be a fundamental difference between Western society and some Eastern societies, but that is a different conversation. Anyway, so what? So, full circle. Do you think that Adam Levine slash the publishers and distributors of the topless video should be fined the same as Janet Jackson? No, I'm going to go with sexual dimorphism. Is okay. And leave it I, I'm gonna go. What is not sexual dimorphism fine. for those of us, including me, who don't actually know what the definition is? It just means that is. men and women are different. Yeah. Okay. And so it's okay to treat them differently. I think that men and women are f f biologically different, but I don't think that you can treat them differently in the law. And in this case, this was the FCC, a agency enacting, you know, or, or enforcing a law saying that Janet Jackson was not allowed to accidentally slip a nipple. Why? Why wouldn't uh, Adam Levine be fined? you know, just as much, if not double, for having shown both of his. I'm pretty sure there were people in the audience who were turned on by that. Yeah, oh yeah, there were definitely women that were hot and bothered by it. Like... <laughs> so if it's illegal to show me a Janet Jackson's nipple, then it has to be illegal by federal law. We have protected classes of people, sexuality and all that, sex, gender, all that, so nipples are in there. If, if if her nipple is illegal, then why is his nipple legal? At yes, least but as acknowledge I was the to double say, standard. When you're discriminating on sex, you usually have to only meet either intermediate scrutiny. So the standard's a lot different than if you're trying to discriminate on the basis of race. So legally, you have to make a much lower standard. I guess I'm speaking overall to the situation and not necessarily asking which law applies and how does the law operate. But I agree with you that if intermediate scrutiny is how we how we evaluate sex and sexuality, which I'm going to just hold out for with agreeing with you for just a moment, because it does that sounds like a fundamental right, not an intermediate right. But uh, I still feel that there's a double standard there. I'm, and I, I'm the one I'm a male. I'm the one who can show my nipples with with impunity, without without consequence. So then why, why is it that it's not okay for my female citizen, you know, uh, colleagues, citizens of the world to have the same rights I do? That seems like a gender rights kind of thing. If I have a right based on my gender, they have a right based, it should be the same right. I'm okay with boobs. So if people wanted to get together and say, actually, we think women should be able to show their boobs if they so wish, uh, as long as they're not like interfering with with other people, then you know I, I can't see a lot of harm in that. <laughs> to quote this one person from Westchester, it is ridiculous that Janet Jackson was forced to issue an apology. CBS was fined over the accidental exposure of her nipple at the 2004 halftime show, but Adam Levine took his shirt off for part of his performance at the 2019 halftime show. CBS should be fined. Otherwise, it is a complete double standard. W what are we doing if if next year's Super Bowl halftime show has a female performer who, who takes her top off. I, I believe that if that person gets fined, I would be defending with a 
with a with one defense, one of many defenses would be uh, that that this is a, a in app that this is a misapplied or, or um, um, as applied constitutional violation. You can't have this double standard of Adam Levine not getting fined, but then a person who does the exact same thing, uh, or even lesser, you know, if it, if it was an accidental nipple slip for Janet Jackson. You can't have that. You can't have that double standard. You, you, those things don't reconcile under federal law, in my humble opinion. But what's intermediate scrutiny? There's something in between uh, full scrutiny and minimal scrutiny, and we don't even know what scrutiny is yet because we haven't defined it on this stream. We're talking about constitutional scrutiny. Uh, what standard does the government have to meet when they are infringing upon one of your rights? And so there's three levels of scrutiny. There's strict scrutiny, where for your most fundamental rights, your 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 government has to have a uh, has to tailor their action or regulation or whatever um, to minimally intrude on your rights and their need has to be a very specific governmental need. Uh, at the opposite end for minimal scrutiny, which is uh, a good example, is marijuana regulation. Marijuana yeah. is not a fundamental right. It triggers minimum scrutiny under the, under the law. So the government just has to have any connection whatsoever. Uh, to, there needs to be some connection, any connection whatsoever between the government's interests and the need to regulate that thing. And then somewhere in the middle is intermediate scrutiny. Go, Kurt. So, yeah, at the bottom is rational basis scrutiny. So you just have to have a reason. It doesn't need to be the stated reason in the law. It can be any reason. And it can be yeah, it, it different can't be than a the ridiculous reason. reason. It can't be an absurd reason. It has to be a rational. No, because the government can't do something that's arbitrary and capricious. They can't do something that's just completely baseless. So they have to have a reason. So that's bottom line. But then the next one up reason. is intermediate. Yeah. yeah. Next one up is intermediate scrutiny where you have to have a substantial governmental interest. And it has to be narrowly tailored to that interest. And then finally, at the top of the list is strict scrutiny, which has to be a compelling governmental interest. It has to be the least restrictive means to that, which is normally like a free speech issue. So like if you want to discriminate on, say, for example, the subject matter of speech, you would have to show that it's a compelling need. And the law that you passed is the least restrictive way you could possibly do it. I still don't see how that overcomes the various protected classes of of citizens that we have in the US under I guess it's civil rights law. Basically, let us know in the comments, chat and everything of this video what your thoughts are on whether it is correct, not correct, and what you think should be done about Adam Levine uh, exposing his nipples in the Super Bowl halftime show. And then pause the video and do that if you don't want to hear my opinion. But my opinion is that I don't see any problem with nipples to begin with, so Adam Levine shouldn't be fined, and the FCC should basically acknowledge that it was a stupid policy to have Janet Jackson fine $550,000 for exposing a nipple on TV when clearly it's okay to expose nipples on TV if you're male, and it's only not okay if you are of a specific gender. And then how do you feel about that? Is that okay? We're, we're allowed to discriminate against gender now, as long as it's under certain circumstances, like public broadcasting? I don't know. I thought public broadcasting, or, or, or it, not even, it's not even public broadcasting, a private broadcast, or, or this is a private company broadcasting on one of the three big TV stations. In this case, I think it was CBS. It's fine when it's when it's private, like cable. Cable TV, when you send it over a cable, is considered something different. So this was broadcast over the airwaves, which is why a different lewdness standard applies. And I'm not arguing that that standard exists. I'm not arguing that intermediate scrutiny doesn't exist. And I'm not arguing that a court couldn't use intermediate scrutiny to determine that this was not a violation. What I'm saying is, is that, do we agree whether that that's right or wrong? because I think there's a philosophical issue here. And I think that the FCC is reflecting or attempting to reflect um, general societal standards. And so I think, first of all, complaining to the FCC about the double standard, I think that's a great sort of protest um, to, to bring attention to the double standard that we have. Uh, 
I think, I, I don't know if the FCC is in the quote unquote wrong in the legal sense, but I think there's there's a question of what should the standard be and, and we get to reflect, decide as a, as a society, what do we think it should be? That's our show. I'm sorry it ran long. We had some technical difficulties in the beginning. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and we will thank all of our March Patreon supporters. At the $50 level, Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mantain, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, and S. Bernari. Thank you very much for your support at the $50 level. If you choose to support on patreon.com slash ljfrench, your pledge will become an actual dollar support the first or so of the next month. So if you wanted the support for April, you'd have to start now, and then you'll be on the list for April. The $5 plus supporters for March are scrolling on the LED panel behind me and are also going to be on the crawl of any VODs that we drop. Uh, using this video so let's just hold nico give him a great big hug and call that our stream love you guys <laughs> pick his head up he doesn't want to pick his head up he's fighting me <laughs> love you guys bye sometimes. Yes.